it's three o'clock on Saturday morning and man has it been extremely windy this morning. Grandpa actually went hunting and seen a few doe this morning and got ended up getting some mud on his rifle. Plugged it. <laughs> so he spent the rest of the morning getting the mud off his rifle. Never did. I had to come home and clean it. I give up. Well, it's probably... I did that with shotguns different times. Always pretty much with snow. You'd fall down, hit a slippery piece of wood or something. Yeah. You just take the barrel off and poke a golden rod or something through it and you're all set. But a rifle's a different ball game. Yeah, and everything's so muddy and slick today. Yeah. We All the snow had melted and we got quite a bit oh. of rain, so just... Of, it's a well, that mess. Coming to your place is full bank. So oh, it's yeah. fresh grit. Yep. And that's got to be raining because the snow has been gone. Yep. We got a bunch of turkeys out in the field here right when we got here. So that's a good sign. There's been a, a big six point that's been coming out here. He's a three and a half year old buck. And he's. He's pretty nice, really. I mean, he's definitely one that we'd want to shoot. Did anybody get the one we seen the day I was over here? No, nope, he's still alive. And uh, I was telling Grandpa before we got here, I had a big bear in my corn last night down here by the strip food plot. It's the first time I've seen a bear in there in a long time. And he, uh, to get into that corn, he's pretty much got to go through this strip food plot that we can see down here. So I think with him being in there last night, I would imagine that he'll probably be back in there tonight. I just don't know if he's coming through here during daylight or or what. I looked from the house because you can kind of see uh, the house that's kind of over the corn. So I took the uh, binoculars and looked in the corn really close trying to see if I could see him if he was still in there and I couldn't see him so uh, he's probably pretty close. If it wasn't for this little building and little buddies I'd be home on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa gets a kick out of this little buddy here. It's the best thing he ever invented other than scopes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. The people on my YouTube channel really get a kick out of your stories, Grandpa. And on the last video, there was a lot of people that were commenting on there. The uh, one of the stories uh, you should tell everybody is uh, opening day of trout season. With the oh, that was awful. <laughs> that was awful. I was hunting. That started in the fall. It was a small creek, but there was a few holes in it. I was hunting grouse over there with a beagle. The leaves were on a beautiful day. I don't really know where he was and, and where the creek was. I was probably 15 feet from it. And something was going nuts in the water. I could hear it. I could hear it back then. <laughs> and I thought, boy, that's something. Instead of trying to sneak up, I just walked up there like a bull in a giant gun and I went, zoom, all these trout, I mean trout, some of them suckers was 20 inches long. They just disappeared. So something pretty rare for me, I never said a word to anybody all winter. And the first day of trout season, I was over there with a bunch of night callers. A fly rod, everything you're supposed to have, I never caught a trout. And it was a good day. It was half rain and half snow, cold. Oh. And I went to one of them holes and my line would just twink a little bit. But I didn't know nothing about trout, so I'd pull and there wouldn't be any worm on it. And this went on for about two night crawlers. Now finally, it was. I pulled it up real slow, and the biggest crab for around here, he, he was probably four and a half inches long, wrapped around the line and eating my night crawler. It was so cold there was ice in the little eyes on the fly rod, and I always carried a Huntsman Colt 22 automatic, and I just raised the pole up. 
and the crab hung on and hung on and I got him about an inch from the end of the barrel and sent him to the promised land. <laughs> Blowed my hook away and everything. And I never fished trout again. I'd had enough. I did oh. some. Oh, that was cold. <laughs> yeah, I can just picture you there pulling that thing out of the out of the creek and I was so surprised. I didn't you know, it's so early in the year, it's the first of April. I didn't know those little varmints was moving around that time of year. Yeah, you specialize mostly in pike and muskie fishing. Yeah, didn't you? northern muskie. You caught a lot of northern pike over the years. Never any big one, real big. Thirty-six inch, the biggest one I ever caught. But pretty much always fishing the creeks and. Mm -hmm. Although I was talking to a guy last year, they built a new house up at the UB camp and we got to talking about fishing. And and we never fished that end of French Creek. We always started in the PA by the fairground. And up across from the drag strip, there must be a big hole down in there because a friend of his caught a 60 inch lunge in there. That's a big fish. And I asked him what it weighed, and he, he said, I don't think they even weighed it. I, <laughs> for some reason, that's the first thing we always did, was try to weigh them. But I never caught a big lunge. 12 pounds, the biggest one I ever caught. When you fished them, did you do uh, mostly trolling, or you're right on the edge just casting? No, I ca cast casted, and then later in the fall, when the water's cold, we fish light bait, but that's not a much of an option today. They don't want you to do it because as a rule you kill the fish, they swallow the bait and you rip them up with a hook. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to troll. I finally years later after I was married bought a little motor and was trying to troll. It's, it's just a fight. The wind blows the boat around and I never caught anything. I finally pulled the plug in there'd be about eight to ten inches of weed hanging on to it. You had no idea how many times you'd circle the lake with that on there. I was pretty discouraged with it, but when my youngest girl got married, my son-in-law got interested in it, and he said, I give him the motor. I wasn't going to use it anymore. Mm -hmm. And he made, in one summer, he caught two 30-pounders out of the lake. Jeez. But he lost a lot of plugs, and I can see now he was fishing deep. Yeah. And I never did. I don't. Not because of not caring about losing a plug so much. I just. I guess I wasn't smart enough to fish where the fish were. Well, nowadays they they have uh, fish finders that you can yeah. just plug into your uh, boat and they'll just. You just drive yeah. around and they'll say, put fish right here. <laughs> yep. They got them to where now you can almost tell how big the fish is, I guess. But I know the guys fishing walleye on Lake Erie, they, they really, they live by them things. And I don't know if walleye's in school and fish, I suppose if there's one or more or something. But yeah. They used to catch a lot of sturgeon out of Lake Erie, but they're pretty rare today. There's still a few in there, but. Yeah. You know, did you ever see the news on there is a, a huge walleye fishing tournament in Ohio in Cleveland there and these two guys got caught they were shoving lead weights down their yeah. throats and yeah. the they did the weigh in and of course these guys beat everybody by umpteen pounds and yeah. The guy yeah, said, yeah. "Come on over here to the uh, the, to the side and split them open." <laughs> he split them open, and Jesus, they had a huge egg-shaped lead weights in their stomachs, yeah. and of course, everybody raised. I can't believe they didn't get the shit beat out of them. You know, I'm, they weren't happy. <laughs> if if I spent thousands of dollars to to uh, fish in those contests and travel all over the country, I think I'd be a little upset with them. And who's to say? You know, they, every time mm -hmm. they've won a tournament. Who, yeah, really. You, they might have won some. I don't know, but yeah. you, you have a 20 pound fish, it's usually a five to six, maybe a seven pounder, and all of a sudden they're catching them at a 10 pound. That's kind of a red flag. Yeah. You know? It sounds like, I, I read into it a little bit, it sounds like a lot of their competition, I think, uh, I think a lot of them thought they were doing that. 
mm -hmm. because it just didn't make sense, you know. Those bass tournaments or something, because you there's a there's a lot of ways of making money. The first fish in, and and different live well in your boat, and that's why the motor on us as big as this shack. You want to get back in, yeah, and stuff yep. like that. But they had one on Lake Erie, right where I worked up Westfield, New York, and out of Barcelona. And guys come, a lot of guys come up from Pittsburgh. My buddy fished the lake all the time. He went down there and. He'd come up a storm that day, and he spent all afternoon, him and a lot of other friends, he wasn't in on the tournament, he didn't have a bass boat or anything, they fished for walleye. But they, those bass boats Arr. do not take on much water. No. And those things slipped over just like Abe Wow. And they lost equipment. And one of the guys told my friend, he said, you know, we had heard about this lake before we come, how quick it can get rough. But he said, I never see anything like this. Yeah. And they never had another tournament that, well, nobody would have showed up. <laughs> yeah. Looks like this wind's kind of knocking over some of my tree tubes down there. There's used to, there was a tree tubes up here on the left right in front of that apple tree, and it's not, I don't even see it. So that's obviously knocked down. Or it's that bear. Those bears love, like, you wouldn't believe it. They, they monkey with them? Oh. Unbelievable! Though, I swear they'd walk through the woods, and if they seen a tree tube 150 yards away, they'd zero beeline right for it and knock it over. And then they put a tree tube in. And you know those white peppermints? Yeah. Fill it full of that. And then if you get a bear smell his breath, you'll know if he's been playing with your tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really don't want to smell one's breath. <laughs> well, or. I'll tell you, if that bear comes out down here, I wouldn't be surprised if you put a hole through it sniffing one of them tree tubes, because they, they are just infatuated with them. What do you pay for the tree? Uh, it depends on what it is. So if it's a, if it's like a three-year three year old uh, swamp oak, I think those are around 40 bucks. They're I'm expensive. Just, the reason I'm checking, if I screw up and cut your tree off, <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> if you can if you can saw one of them down from here in one shot, I'd be impressed. <laughs> I remember one time I was sitting on the edge of a ravine, deer season, but it was a beautiful day, fall, and a bird went by me and hit the bank on the other side. I could see it perfect, and I, I, I thought, man, I never saw a grouse wreck up in my life. We had a lot of grouse back then, and there was a bunch of stuff going on in the leaves. And all of a sudden this red tail hawk lifted on him. <laughs> he had a red squirrel and his little tail was doing that yeah. circle. He, oh, was, he's dead. he was going home for supper. <laughs> Wasn't a good day to be a red squirrel in front of them suckers. No. It was actually pretty amazing. Kaylee and I were hunting up here last week and uh, there was all those turkeys out in the corn and a bald eagle came flying up over the tree line right here and those Ooh. turkeys just ran for every one of them just took off like you yeah. wouldn't believe right for the woods. They don't like them big birds flying over them. They'd take a small one. Oh yeah. Travis was, was, my neighbor was still working in Jamestown. He had to cross the French Creek Bridge every day and he thought somebody hit a deer. There was a couple of cars stopped there. So he pulled up and they were all looking and he said probably 50 yards off the road there was a dead goose there and he said I don't know if the eagle killed it or just come along or what but he, he said he'd get it up in the air about 10 feet and then lose it Oh, I couldn't. and he'd drop back down yeah. and, but I think probably once he got enough feathers pulled out of him he'd have probably hung on to it. Oh yeah. But he had to go to work so he never did see how it ended. My God, it's a good thing we buried these legs deep into the ground. This thing would be right over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it isn't even wiggling. No. I don't like heights. Yeah. No, my buddy was in the army, I don't know, eight months or so ahead of me. And he found out I was 
getting put in the infantry, so he kept writing letters. He said, you got it made. You, you got to do that anyway, so now you can come down and go airborne with me. Yeah. <laughs> I calmly wrote him a letter. I wasn't going to play that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> you weren't jumping out of any planes anytime no. soon, were you? I don't know if these deer are really going to move tonight with it being 30 mile an hour wind gusts, but. I'm surprised we moved. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> We actually punched in early. It was five minutes to three when we got in there. Yeah. So we might get a little low tea in our paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> There's the bald eagles we were just talking about. They're probably looking for the turkeys. Mm -hmm. Looks like three of them. That back one's a little buck. Oh, there's two bucks. Two bucks and a little fawn. That's a good sign. Yep. It's 12 minutes to four. Yeah, that's a real good sign. Right now, if you aim at one of them, a bullet would hit one of those trees over there and really the wind blow. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, there's some more just came out over to the right. Looks like a little, another little fawn. See it right on the edge of the woods over to the right? Boy, they really blend in with no snow. They're hard to see. Can't see that. Oh, I can see it now. The nice thing about the wind direction is it's right with the shot mm -hmm. here, you know. It's a good thing. <laughs> yep. Well, you were right. You said we'd see some deer before four. Seen four of them, two bucks and two fawns. They claim they go by the light, and now it's it's getting pretty dark quick right now. Yeah, the this week uh, shooting hours. I mean, it's it is pitch black. What's the, the time, longest day? Shortest day? I don't know. Seventeenth of November or something. I have no idea. I think it's November. I'm not sure. I know that's when I wanted to get married because it'd be the longest night. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sure as hell ain't a monster. You've seen it by now. Yeah, it's a, looks like a fawn. Probably one of them ones that run in. Yeah, I bet you're right. Uh, 
That's a big doe. Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five of them out there now, total. Second shift. That one's going over there to check out that hanging vine I got. Oh, here comes another one out. Uh, Holy cow, a whole bunch of them coming out. Christ, it must have opened the gates. Oh, there's a nice buck, Grandpa. Nice buck just came out. No, I don't think I'm gonna be able to see that bass. He's right in the corner there. Oh, he's he's out in the plot now. If he's if you look moving to the right. Yeah, go to the right a little bit, Grandpa. Yeah, I go farther to the right. He's a, see the whole herd out there. Yeah, there's he's a real big body. Just picked his head up. See him? Nope. There's more of them coming out. There is a lot of freaking deer out there. Holy crap. They couldn't see him. The rifle's right on him right now, Grandpa. If you look through the scope, it's right on that deer. He's got his he's got his head down eating corn. There's a deer walking right in front of him. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. There's a deer right in front of him right now. He's safe off. Yep, safe's off. He's facing. There's like three deer right in a line. Now there's another deer walking right in front of him. He's a dark one, right? Uh, he's, there's too many deer there right now. 
Okay, he's facing somewhat. Well, there's another deer walking right behind him. He got his head down? Yep. Got him. <laughs> Smoked him. <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> <laughs> you hammered him, Grandpa. Nice shot. I'm shaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Jeez, there was how many deer came out there all at once? Yeah, try and sort that mess off. Oh, my gosh. There is like... What do you think for that 06 second? <laughs> <laughs> nice shot. You dropped him. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Man, there's a pile of deer coming out there. We gotta turn little buddy off. <laughs> well, that kicked me and I gotta pee now. Yeah. <laughs> Hell of a shot, he's Grandpa. Yeah, he's dead. Actually, there's a deer walking up to him right now. Yep, she's just standing out there, like, hanging out. <laughs> it's like, why is he sleeping already? <laughs> Let's go check it out, Grandpa. You're three and zero out of there, Grandpa. You haven't missed one. <laughs> I think it's time to retire. Yeah, <laughs> that one didn't run into a tree, at least. Things are changing. <laughs> As you guys can see, it's the next day after the hunt. Grandpa made an absolutely awesome shot on that buck in the food plot last night. Unfortunately, my camera didn't have a full battery charge and when we were driving out there to recover the deer, my camera died. And partly due to the cold weather, these batteries don't do well with cold weather. They'll go from 40% to 20% to 5% in a matter of a few minutes if it gets too chilly. So, sorry about that. Uh, that was unfortunate. The other Thing, you know, if Kaylee would have plugged it in last time she hunted, we probably wouldn't have had any issues. Coming back at you. <laughs> she don't want me to tell anybody about that. <laughs> Grandpa filled his 20, 22 buck tag once again. So thanks for watching. Uh, take advantage of some of these discount codes for Christmas if you guys are interested. Uh, Tied we KEO 16 gets you 16% off everything on the website. We got Onyx. Uh, discount code as well which gets you 30 percent off an elite membership which are absolutely awesome onyx is is great i use it all the time for lots of different applications so if you guys are interested in any of those check them out links are in the description thanks for watching we'll be back at them soon